This tutorial will help you to learn Artithread open source real time operating system step by step. And my name is Miko. Today I'll give an introduction of Artithread. First things, let's start with real time kernel. To better learning Artithread, we'd better get to know what the real time kernel is and why it is needed. If we haven't used a real-time kernel yet, we often use the foreground-background system model, which means we put all the tasks in the main function, and every task will run in order. Even task 2 gets emergency, it still have no chance to run until task 1 has finished. If we want the task to handle emergency and give the reaction immediately, we need to put the task into the interrupt, also known as ISR. So the main function is the background and the interrupt is the foreground. More specifically, let's check out this graph and assume that the emergency level of task 1 is lower than that of task 2. And task 1 runs first. At this moment, task 1 needs to delay for a while. Following the foreground background system method, task 2, the emergency level is higher than that of task 1, still cannot run because the CPU must wait for the termination of task 1. Only after task 1 finished, then task 2 finally can start. If there is an interrupt happened at this moment, the CPU will do a contact switch to switch from task 2 to the interrupt. When the interrupt finished, task 2 will continue running to the end. Thus, we can see there are three main drawbacks in the foreground background system. Number one, during this period, CPU is just waiting and running for nothing. Number two, these two tasks are run robin and not primitive. Number three, Foreground background system is non deterministic. In this case, we need to use real time kernel to improve. A real time kernel is a kind of software that manages the time and the resources of microprocessor, microcontroller, or a digital signal processor. So, here's a question for you What is the exact definition of real time? Does real time means faster? No. Does real time mean more efficient? No. Actually, real time means deterministic. Deterministic. Real time system have a die line, especially for the hard real time system. In many cases, missing a die line often results in catastrophe, which means even involve human lives. Okay, this graph will help us to further understanding the real-time kernel. As usual, we assume that the priority of task 2 is higher than that of task 1. But you may notice that I changed my words. In the previous slide, I used the emergency level. But in this slide, I changed my words to priority. They are the same meaning but the priority is a term in real-time kernel, a uh, correct saying. Well, task 1 runs first, and at this moment, task 2 are, is ready to go. However, we can see that this is quite different from the foreground-background system is that task 2 doesn't need to wait for determination of task 1 any longer. By contrast, task 2 directly print task 1 although task 1 has not finished yet. And at this moment, task 2 wants to delay for a while, and the real-time kernel scheduler switches the CPU from task 2 to task 1 instead of waiting for nothing. And at this point, an interrupt is coming in. In real-time kernel, interrupts have the highest priority. So task 2 must wait until the interrupt has finished. Then task 2 and task 1 finish their job 
respectively. So compared to the foreground background system, we can find that there are three aspects of improvement. Number one, task two delays for real and real-time kernel switches CPU to task one, which means multitasking. Multitasking is the process of scheduling and switching the CPU between several tasks. Multitasking provides the illusion of having multiple CPUs and maximize the use of CPU. Thus, while one task is delayed for a given time, it can freely and simultaneously active another task. Number two, real-time kernel is primitive, which means kernel always runs the most important and urgent task. Number three, deterministic, which means kernel ensures that the most urgent task will be finished before the deadline. There are several advantages of multitasking. Multitasking helps in creation of modular applications. The design process of a real-time application involves splitting the work into tasks, each responsible for a portion of job, which also means these modules are reusable. One of the most important aspects of multitasking is that it allows the application programmer to manage the complexity inherent in real-time applications. Application programs are easier to design and maintain when multitasking is used. Meanwhile, program programs are more reliable and more efficient. And one of the most critical rules of the real-time kernel is to offer the ability to operate multiple tasks between tasks as needed. What's more, it offers services to each task through system calls. We just introduce the delay calls here, but the real-time kernel can provide many other functions through system calls. Now we have known the basic concept of real-time kernel. I will introduce next concept, real-time operating system or RTOS. So what's the relationship between the real-time kernel and the real-time operating system? A real-time operating system contains a real-time kernel and other higher level services such as uh, file management, protocol stacks, for example, TCP IP, USB, CAN bus, model bus, such as this, a GUI, and other components. So RT-Thread is a real-time operating system. RT-Thread has standard version and nano version. The standard version consists of kernel layer, components, service layer, and IoT framework layer. The nano version with a very small size and refined real-time kernel requires only 3 kilobytes of flash, 1.2 kilobytes of memory, which is very suited for the extreme resource-constrained embedded systems. RTThread has completed middle-tier components that cover almost all the underlying components needed for the IoT industry, including the file system, lower power management, network protocol, GUI, audio framework, AT component, and so on. Meanwhile, RTThread also carries more than 300 software packages. Most of these packages were contributed by our community. RTThread has a clear architecture, precise APIs, outstanding debug features, also supports many auxiliary tools, project interfaces, and development environments, such as Q or IAR. But these two IDE are commercial software. They are not free to use. GCC2 Chain is free, but you need to write the make file script. It is difficult and complex for the beginners. So RTThread team decided to develop a new IDE, RTThread Studio. 
Artist Red Studio was launched in 2019 with a powerful graphic configuration system. Artist Red Studio uses GCC2 chain, but you don't need to write the make file script. It's very easy to use. All of this offers a way for developers to simplify the complexity of software development. And the more important thing is, Artist Red Studio is free of charge. From next video, I will use RT Studio to teach you how to use RT Thread operating system to build your own project step by step. And this is my references. Hope you guys enjoy this video and see you next time.